Okay, so we're going to expand a couple of techniques out to higher order polynomials. So I just want to take a second and review uh, the mechanics of uh, some of these earlier processes when it was just dealing with linear methods. Uh, so the first task is the uh, we got a, a linear form of a differential equation. Um, so if you recall, uh, if I have something that looks like this top statement here, uh, I might have to divide uh, by the coefficient, uh, and when I do that, that's going to redefine this as a polynomial. Uh, there's an integrating factor that I end up uh, multiplying each term by and then solving. Uh, and then that gives me uh, my uh, complementary solutions, uh, and then I can work backwards from that to find a particular set of solutions. Um, so just a quick review of that. Uh, we also had the idea of variation of parameters. Uh, and this is um, kind of you, this is the U substitution idea, um, where the product rule ends up making it a little bit easier for us. I did put up the details uh, on the mechanics of how why that works. So I, I'm kind of making a judgment call on, I'm not gonna hang out so much on theory for this particular lesson, just cause we get down uh, below on the examples, we're gonna have some mixture of substitutions uh, for some of these higher order polynomials. But hopefully this looks somewhat familiar to us um, as far as how one uh, generates all these things. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I wanna make a comment about? And this uh, same integrating factor, uh, end up doing a substitution. Okay, I'm pretty good about that. Okay, uh, and then our particular solution we find by integrating uh, from there. Okay, so how does this process change when we look at a second order differential equation? Uh, and the answer is, it, it's a similar process. Um, and so what I mean by similar, uh, in our second order differential equation, we might have a coefficient out there, so we're gonna divide each term by that leading coefficient of the second degree, uh, and that's gonna redefine the coefficients in front of each of the other forms. Um, so we're gonna give those different names uh, just for convenience sake, so we'll call them P of X and Q of X, and then our G of X, since we've divided by that uh, leading coefficient term, uh, we'll, we'll call f of x. Uh, and so from there, uh, we have a little bit larger idea of a u substitution uh, because now we have this p of x and q of x uh, coefficient functions that we uh, have to take into account. So can we define uh, c1 and c2 in terms of some u substitution? The answer is yes. Uh, and just like the other example, I went through the mechanics, uh, or at least typed up um, the formality of why does this work. But the short version is it gives us a different scenario that we haven't had to deal with before. Um, but it, it, it's consistent with the linear method, except now we have a second degree polynomial that we have to solve. Uh, so because of that, uh, we end up bringing into this process um, our Ronxian. Okay, so the short version is with that second degree polynomial and those two different substitutions, we end up having uh, a system of equations um, for our y1s and y2s that we end up solving um, by the fact that the original is equal to zero and then the first derivative is equal to the f of x from the original expression. This is the key part right here this stuff right here with the Ronxian and how to set that up. Uh, so we have the Ronxian is uh, the y1, y2s, and then the derivatives of those two expressions. And then we end up generating the Ronxian with respect to f of x, um, where the y1 is zeroed out and we replace that with f of x. And then for y, uh, w2, we put that in the y2 position and keep everything the same. Um, and then we're using determinants. Now, the reason why this works is we're using something from matrices called Kramer's rule. So if you're curious as to why this works or you, you haven't been exposed to Kramer's rule in the past, feel free to look that up. Uh, but the short version is we're dealing with determinants here. 
and these formats uh, for y prime one and y prime or w one prime and u two prime. Uh, that's how the determinant and that's how the Cramer's rule part gets applied. So we're using this to find uh, the two uh, particular solutions for this differential equation. All right, so functions u1 and u2 are found by integrating the results. The determinant is recognized as the Ronxian of y1 and y2. And by uh, that idea of linear independence on y1, y2, um, then that says the wrong scene of those two functions would not equal to zero. Okay, that just simply means they're linearly independent. Okay, so like I said, I chose to uh, jump more to the examples, um, but this formula that's on the screen, that's what I'm gonna use to model my solution process after.